What's up everybody? So this video will be all about transcription. So we know one of the most important molecules in our body is protein. And protein has a wide variety of functions, not just to build your muscles and make you look strong, right? That's one of the teeny tiny functions proteins has. Proteins can serve as enzymes and many, many other things to catalyze many reactions in your body. So protein is super, super important. Now, how is proteins made? How are proteins made? Proteins are made by adding a bunch of amino acids together, okay? A long chain of amino acids is called a protein. A protein, let me bring this in here. Now, what makes proteins different? Because we, we have like an incredible amount of proteins in our body, many, many, many different types. So what makes these proteins different? Two things, the, the length of the amino acid chain, so some proteins are very long, others are short. And then the other thing is, the order of amino acids. So we have like 20 different types of amino acids in our body and depending on the order that we put them in, that will give you a different protein. For example, say we have two proteins that are both 10 amino acids long. That doesn't make them the same protein because one protein may have a different order of amino acid and that gives it an insanely or entirely different function. So this is basically what proteins are. Now, what process is responsible for creating proteins in our body? We call this process transcription and translation. So it's a two-step process. The first one is transcription, and that is followed by translation. In this video, we're mainly going to focus on transcription. Okay, I'll make another one where we follow it up with the final bits, which is translation. So here we go. So who is this right here? Do you know this guy? Maybe you don't, but if, you, if you've watched on TV, maybe some adventure videos, um, he is an adventurer. His name is Bear Grylls, and he loves to basically go outside and destroy himself and make his life very difficult for no reason. So that's what he does. So let's say this is one of his cells, okay, his body cells. Now, let's say he goes outside and does something very, very risky or kind of stupid, and he ends up bleeding a lot, okay, he's bleeding a lot. So at this moment, what his body needs to do is create a protein that will help him stop bleeding, right? To make proteins that will help him clot his blood so he can stop bleeding. So how is this gonna work? So how does this transcription translation work that I'm talking about? Because right now, his cell needs to create this protein. So how's he gonna do that? How's it gonna do that? So it all starts off with our DNA. Our DNA is like in our nucleus, right? And it's our instruction manual. It's, it's the rules that our cells need to follow. So if our cells realize we need this protein, this one specific protein, it's got to go into the, to the nucleus to find the instructions on how to make this protein, right? So that's what our DNA is. Now the problem is, um, all the equipment to make our protein is outside in the cytoplasm, not in the nucleus. So we can't just make the entire protein inside the nucleus. So what we need to do first is copy the specific um, piece of DNA that we need because we don't need the entire DNA, right? We only need the part of the DNA that is going to help us um, code for this specific protein, right? Our DNA is insanely long and codes for all the proteins that we need in our body. But at this moment, he only needs this one specific protein. So what we're going to do is copy the specific piece of uh, DNA that we need. Okay, so we copy it into, um, so we copy it. Now what we need a specific enzyme to copy it, which I'll talk about later, okay? So this is the enzyme that we need. And this enzyme is in our nucleus, and it's going to help copy the specific piece of DNA that we need. And here it is. So we copied the piece of DNA. Now notice, we copied only one strand. We didn't copy two strands. The DNA is double-stranded, yet we only copied a single strand, okay? But we're going to get more into detail about this later. Just now, for now, know that um, the first part... Um, is transcription, which is the process of copying the specific piece of DNA that we need, okay? So now, let me show you, this process was called transcription. Transcription, let me put it here. I'll make it a bit shorter. This right here is transcription, transcription. And this happens inside the nucleus. I'll put the nucleus here, nucleus. So now that we have copied the specific piece of DNA that we need, this is going to exit the nucleus into the cytoplasm, into the cytoplasm. Because I told you, in the cytoplasm is where we have all the materials and machinery to make this protein and read this instruction manual. So let me show you. So now, we're going to basically create this protein. We're going to use a bunch of 
machinery and other things. Don't worry about these things now. I'm just showing them for you. We're going to use some things to to read this this instruction manual and create this protein. And we call the second part, so this part from here, using this um, thing, this uh, instruction manual created from transcription and turning it into a protein, that's called translation. So these are the two processes, transcription and translation. Transcription happens in the nucleus and translation will happen in the cytoplasm. And I'll talk about this one in the next video. So let's now go into looking at exactly what details you need to know for transcription. So let's say we have his DNA, right? Um, Bear Grylls' DNA, and his DNA is very, very long, like I emphasized before. We don't need all of it. We need a tiny piece of it, the piece that corresponds to how we make this protein that will help him stop bleeding. So let's say the part of the DNA that's going to help him code for the protein that stops bleeding is this part here, only this part here, this tiny part here. So what's going to happen is we need this enzyme called RNA polymerase. And what it's going to do is it's going to uncoil this specific part that we need because it is very difficult to copy the DNA when it's like coiled up like this. It's very hard to work with. So this enzyme, this RNA polymerase, and I'll describe the name a bit more later, but for now just know that this enzyme is going to help uncoil the specific section that we need. And then it's going to split it apart. So it's going to, one, uncoil it, and then, two, break all these bonds. Notice, right, we have all these letters, A, C, T, and G, binded together like this, right? So the thing it's got to do is break them apart, zip it up, basically unzip it like a zip. And that will help our DNA look like this, right? So here we have the nucleus. We have the specific section that we unwound and broke the bonds of, and here's the cytoplasm outside. Now remember, just for a quick re recap, that our DNA is made up of four bases, guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. Adenine and thymine, so the orange and the red here, always bind together, and then the uh, green and the blue, which is cytosine and guanine, always bind together, right? So anyways, this is the case for DNA. So now, we basically ripped apart this DNA, and I'm going to give you some names real quick. Oh yeah, by the way, again, let me show you. We have, which enzyme did that? RNA polymerase. So it went to the specific section of the DNA that we want to use. It unwound it, broke all those bonds, and now it's going to do the next step, which I'll explain very soon. Let's label some things first off. So these two strands that were separated, we give them names. So I'm going to call this top one sense strand. We call it the sense strand, and I'll tell you why it makes sense later. So this is the anti-sense strand, the anti-sense strand. Now, then we have two more other names. They're called the promoter region, which is the part where um, the RNA polymerase, so we know the RNA polymerase. This is the part where the RNA polymerase starts transcription. And then we have the terminator region, which is where the RNA polymerase will end transcription. So basically, the pr promoter region is the beginning of the gene that we want, and the terminator region is the ending of the gene that we want. So we're almost there with labeling stuff. I want to quickly do one last thing. So we know our DNA, right, has these two strands. They're double-stranded. Let's look at this dark blue strand. We know that one of the ends is called the 5' prime end, and then the other end of this blue, if we follow along this blue, blue strand to the other end, we call that the 3' prime end. Now the opposite strand, so the opposite strand will, will work the exact opposite way. So if this blue strand, this is the 5' prime end, it means this light blue one, this will be the three prime end. So it works the exact opposite. And if you don't understand why, um, you need to go check out the DNA structure video that I made, like on DNA structure and replication. I mean, just DNA structure. Then it will make sense. But for now, just think of it like head and toe. We call it the top and the bottom. Okay, And the two strands are the opposite. We call that anti-parallel. We call the strands anti-parallel. Now, now everything is labeled. So let's get started. So here we go with our, um, what, do you, what do we call it, RNA polymerase. So it's going to start here at the promoter region, right? And it's going to move in this way. It's going to un uncoil and then uh, and break all the bonds. And in the process of doing so, it's going to synthesize an mRNA molecule, an mRNA molecule. And I'll show you exactly what that is just now. So essentially, we're going to work on the antisense strand. We're going to work on this bottom one. This process... Um, of transcription always happens on the anti-sense strand. And again, I, I will make sense of what, what the difference is between these two. 
So anyways, I'm going to move this guy out of the way just so I can start filling on something. But bear in mind, all of this happens inside here, and I'll show it just now. So what happens is this RNA polymerase is going to start um, filling in some complementary base pairing. So let's look at the name. It is RNA polymerase. So what does that mean? RNA is different from DNA, right? DNA is made up of what? These four bases. RNA is made up of what? Let me show you. It's made up of these four bases. I mean, sorry, something's just messing up here. So RNA is made up of these four bases, A, C, D, and U. So RNA doesn't have a T, doesn't have a thymine. So that's important. You need to remember this. So now let's start this process. This RNA polymerase is going to take these nucleotides. There's a bunch of RNA nucleotides floating around, and I made sure to distinguish it from DNA by making it red. So every time you see this red bit, you know it's RNA. So it's going to, oh yeah, back to the name, RNA polymerase it's going to basically per polymerize. Polymerize means to make a chain of. It means to elongate or make a chain of. And ACE is referring to the fact that it's an enzyme. So it's an enzyme that's going to polymerize or make a chain of RNAs. So, but using, but using this antisense strand as a template. So it's going to use this antisense strand as like an example. So let's say it goes. So let's say it takes this one and it's going to be like, okay, Oh, they, they match these two. Remember, the orange and the red always bind together, so it's going to bring that one there. Then it's going to bring another one, and we know um, the blue and green always bind together. Blue and green, so it's binding them. It's going to grab another one, keep going. So it's basically going to keep going this all throughout the entire gene. I'm just going to show you a small section of it, but just bear in mind this happens throughout the entire gene. Okay, let me fix some people's OCD quickly, or my OCD rather. Oh, that's OCD. Okay, almost there. So now this RNA polymerase managed to use this antisense strand as a template and pretty much did um, uh, put, brought in nucleotides that are complementary to the strand, right? So, but notice it didn't force it to make any bonds here. No bonds were made. All it did, all it did was it matched it up but it, um, and bonded them together side by side, but it didn't bind them together here bounded all of these individual nucleotides together, but not to the, to this, to the uh, template itself. And this is important. Why? Because um, normally DNA is bound together, but here we didn't do that. So after a while, let's say um, um, the whole gene was finished, okay? So we know the whole gene was now synthesized. I mean, the whole gene was now copied. So here we have this whole mRNA. Let me bring in the word. We call this mRNA because it's an RNA molecule since it's made up, since it's made up of RNA nucleotides. And M, it's a messenger RNA, messenger RNA, because it serves as a message between the DNA, let me show you, between the DNA and then the cytoplasm where it's going to be built, okay? It's a message between the DNA and the cytoplasm where it's going to be built. So now we made this entire strand, this is this entire strand. Now we use the anti-sense anti strand as a, um, what do you call it, as a, as a template, but in reality, by doing that, we actually created what is on the sense strand, right? Because the sense strand is also complementary to the anti-sense strand. So if we make this mRNA, this mRNA will actually look exactly like the sense strand, right? Let's look. If we look here, for example, look, the orange match with the orange, the blue match with the blue, green, green. So by using, this continues on, so by using the anti-sense strand, we actually made sense. We actually made what makes sense. We made the sense strand. So we have a duplicate here of a part of the DNA called the sense strand. So that's important because that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to copy a piece of the, of the DNA, right? Only a piece of it. And so we did. We copied the sense strand by working on the anti-sense strand. Now, after that, because there's no bonds here, it detaches. So after it's synthesized, it will detach and leave the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Now, one last thing I want to show you is that which direction did we synthesize did we synthesize this RNA in? 
we synthesize it from the 5 prime end to the 3 prime end. From this end to this end. Why does that make sense? That makes sense because if we look at this bottom strand here, this side is the 5 prime end and this side is the 3 prime end, which means that this strand should be the opposite. So this side should be the 3 prime end and that side should be the 5 prime end. And RNA polymerase always synthesizes in the 5 to 3 prime end, which is why we synthesize it from, from the promoter region to the terminator region this way. So, is that it? Is that it that you need to know? That is all for transcription, because now we have finally made this little code, right? We copied a piece of the DNA specifically by working on the anti-sense strand. We copied the sense strand. The only difference is that, is that DNA has these four nucleotides, G, C, uh, uh, G, C, A, and T, whereas RNA has a U instead of the T. So the only difference between this mRNA and the sense strand will be the fact that for every red one, instead of there being a red one on the mRNA, there will be a purple one. There will be what's called the uracil instead. So that's the main difference. And RNA, and unlike DNA, is single-stranded. So we know DNA is double-stranded like this, whereas this mRNA is single-stranded. Okay, so that's the two differences. But in, 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 in regardless, this mRNA is basically matching, is a copied version of the sense strand, which is the code for making that specific protein. So that's what we're doing now. We copied the sense strand, and now our cytoplasm will use this, this copy, this mRNA, this messenger RNA, to build the final protein inside the cytoplasm. Okay, so we're going to look at this part next, which is translation.